Hi, everybody. Today is Thursday, August 10th of 2023. And I'm here with Muant for the weekly crypto review. It's been a, over, well, it's been two weeks now, Mu. Over two weeks. How's it going? It's going great, man. I, I, I'm so excited about the crypto market. I just, I can barely contain myself. Uh, there's so many cool things going on with, uh, you know, the base layer over at Coinbase or, I, listen, this PayPal news of this Ethereum stable there, uh, PayPal stablecoin is is enormous. I think uh, people don't really maybe are not understanding how useful this is. I've mentioned numerous times that, you know, stablecoins are really the killer app for cryptos. And why is that? Uh, if, you, if you can receive them and you can send them and your bank accepts them, you can do lots and lots and lots of things where a normal wire transfer might take you a week or it might get lost in process or whatever. So it's really a killer app for cryptos. Um, and then being able to buy products or settle or take that Ethereum money Lego as far as a stablecoin and plug it into the other Ethereum stack is really, really, really useful. Um, not to mention, you know, I was, I was reading a couple posts yesterday, but or the day before, but, you know, over the last 30 days, Ethereum peaked out, I think, at about 550 million um, active addresses when you compare it to a 30 day moving average. And PayPal alone has 435 million active users. So wow. PayPal has 782 times <laughs> more users than Ethereum. So, um, it's, you know, it's accepted at what, 35, 40 million uh, retailers. Um, you know, a lot of times if I'm out somewhere, I'll just pay via PayPal, uh, swipe my phone and or tap my phone. It's just... This is, this is a big deal. This is really, you know, adoption um, in a big way. We knew that we were getting to this point in the cycle um, anyway, where payment systems needed to come online and would be brought online. So it's it's nice validation for me that I'm kind of right where I thought we were in the cycle. So I'm just super excited. This is huge news. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely it is. And for someone like myself who may have been nervous to put the sale of my home money in the bank, because, you know, that's going to be coming up soon. And then I have to get it to my new country of residence in the currency. And um, I'm a bit nervous about putting it in a bank yeah. to be straight up with you, because it would be more than what is covered. Um, yes, sure. You can put it into a couple of different accounts for sure. Um, but I really like the fact that I could just put it into Ethereum now. And that was something that I was speaking about. A little while ago. Um, so this news coming out is exciting for me because, you know, you always have that in the back of your mind, you know, is the timing right to do this? You know, if I just did the bank, there wouldn't be any problems. But now I don't even have to think about that as an option. It's going to be so much easier to just yeah. use Ethereum. And you can also see with this situation how Ethereum can easily go um, up to 12,000 and then potentially 40,000. I mean, this is, there's why, why can Ethereum not be like Bitcoin? Like what, what is holding it back? I say nothing. I see nothing except better <laughs> technology, <laughs> more usable technology. And the way, you know, Ethereum works is it's, it's like a Lego and it, it can hook onto other things. That's what makes it so great. So really integration. And when you're talking about technology, integration is kind of a nightmare typically, but you know, these standards are really going to help. I want to show you, um, I didn't think we were going to do the ETH show, but I'm excited. So let's do it. So we're up to what in the United States, I think we have 13. Uh, yeah. I think we're up to 13 or 14 uh, ETH futures uh, ETF filings. So that's big over the last two weeks. So that's amazing. August has been great for that. And then VanEck, and this is why I wanted to talk about VanEck. VanEck, uh, well, let me just show you the report, but they did a valuation report on Ethereum and it kind of puts it right in line with where we were talking or what we've been talking about now for so long. So just give me one sec here. Yeah. And it can flip Bitcoin. Oh, easy. Yeah. So this was a, a done by Vanak. This is Ethereum price prediction. This just came out in May. But if we take a look here. Um, they've got three basically scenarios and they actually did a good job. And there's a bigger report than this one, um, but this is kind of just a condensed one. But uh, basically it's, it states here by 2030. So the base case for ETH, uh, base case by 2030, uh, they're saying $11,800. They're saying the bear uh, worst situation would be $343. And then the bull 
if we're truly in bold and uh, this gets the adoption uh, that we think it will and it plugs in the way we know it's going to uh, potentially up to 51,000 per Ethereum. So that's that's just incredible. Really, really cool. Um, and this is a great paper. I put it up on the nerds and the, you know people can go take a look at it or just search for it. Just Vanek price uh, evaluation. But uh, yeah, very, very exciting, Sam. Super cool. Yeah, and we're going to be getting some um, new members soon because uh, we've been talking for a little bit about the website. Uh, currently, our total is at 1.1 trillion, 1.136 trillion. But if I sort these on the ones that I like, there's hundreds. Um, yeah, that's what I expected. So this is clean spark. This, these are all crypto miners. This is uranium miner. And with some of the stuff going on in Africa, it's putting a crimp on some of the uranium production and mining, but these are all crypto miners here. So that's uh, really nice to see. And I'm glad that clean spark is up uh, almost 22%. So that's, that's awesome. Is that your new yeah. favorite one? Clean spark. I haven't heard that one before, but I've been out of the loop for a couple of weeks, but you see on top of all of this on Psychic Nerds, which I did want to mention to new folks that are reviewing um, the video replay or attending live that are new, but I see a lot of the old folks. Hi, nice to see you, Barefoot Doc and Tech Cowgirls in the house and Ren Scott with one T and, and it's uh, 80. I don't, is it Addy or 80? Did I say that right? The first time or the second time? Anyways, I'm sure that she will let me know. Tarzan's here, of course, <laughs> as always. Tarzan's one of the Psychic Nerds and if you haven't checked out Psychic Nerds, um, we're going to be working on some uh, free sample coupons that so that people can try uh, Psychic Nerds and uh, see how they like it because it's a totally different thing from the work that you guys are doing with me. And I, in fact, am a Psychic Nerd because I need that kind of attention myself with the information that I get. It's invaluable. And I feel like if you're in cryptos, you really need to be in a group that technically helps you because you guys know that I was in compliance and finance before getting involved in blockchain. And it is mostly, you know, the finance part that I am good at, whereas Moo's great at the blockchain and we both got some Moo going on. So uh, let's see what you got there for the list and let's see what we can bring up from the questions this week. Sounds great. We got 148 registered. Let's go ahead and just get it kicked off here. Just give me one sec. This is our number one question. It's got 20 upvotes. This is from Petra. Hey, Sam and Moo, how will the U.S. long-term be affected by credit rating being downgraded? And are so we long. still on? Go Sorry, ahead. I thought you were done. <laughs> I, sometimes people put multiple questions in a question, so I like to pause. But go ahead. What, what do you think about the U.S. Uh, downgrade? I feel, uh, well, it was a long time coming, a bit of a wake up call for the American people because, you know, the politicians have been driving it off into a ditch for a very long time and you've been electing and reelecting them. Um, so I expected that this year would be a big year of changes. So really that downgrade is something that's going to uh, help the system. It's almost like when, you know, somebody either starts, you know, drinking too much and their spouse or their family gives them a little wake up call and says, you know... You might think that you can do that and get away with it, but I'm not sticking around for that because that's BS and I got a life over here to live and you're you're kind of messing it up with your decisions. So that's basically what Moody's did to uh, the United States government and the American people went, huh? You know, because, you know, they've had intra high interest rates affecting them. And remember a couple of years ago when we were talking about the voodoo economics, how we would see gold would increase. Yep. But interest rates would be going up and the equity market would be going up. And then the cryptos would be not only going to the 800 billion, but into the trillions. And we we saw all of that happen. But that is all as a result of the money printing. But for the long term, there's going to be a flight of safety to the United States. We are just getting started with the everything all at once. And uh, so... I hope to uh, do a good job here driving the bus, trying to look ahead at, you know, miss those potholes because, you know, you guys are on the bus with me and we got a, a few other people I talk about from here and the, here and there. But I think it's more comedy relief when I talk about Nigel's getting on the bus and then they freeze his bank account like within the week. I almost felt like if I knew him, I'd send him a note and say, sorry, Nigel, I was just I was just having some fun. But I didn't realize that. Uh, it was going to, things were going to start getting crazy, but you know, this is all part of it. And we discussed it before that a really big part of 
you know, kind of saving the world is through blockchain. And um, I do see a number of natural disasters headed our way that we as humanity together can handle. We can deal with it. We have the technology. We have the will. Um, we have the might. Um, we just need some direction sometimes. But one of the things that we definitely weren't going to be getting away with is the financial uh, degradation that um, we have caused to ourselves by printing money. But thankfully, blockchain is going to come to the rescue because with the Ethereum, this is where I'm getting into the Ethereum. You kind of, I, I describe, it's like, it's not even really a soft landing. It's like, it's like this as the financial system changes. So instead of it going, and then everybody like for 20 years, like, you know, and whoever doesn't starve to death, you know, and then, and then eventually some new system, because that, that was the way things used to happen you know, like a hundred years ago, but now I just see it more like that. So even your government, your politicians, they don't want to see that either because they have family and they know that um, some of the other countries are seeing um, the torches and pitchforks now. So I didn't see that really coming for the United States at that level, but I did see the uncovering of a lot of stuff that caused it. So I see a bright future, but right now it's, it's, you know, it's just like when you're having a baby, right? You're like, Oh, the next 24 hours is going to be hell. But after that, hopefully things will be okay. Then the second part is, uh, are we still on target for a dollar XRP and Doge by September? On target? Ah, that's interesting questions. You mean, have I changed my mind or have I had new information? I think is what it means. Because I, I have a lot of people. she means. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that's what people ask for me is, you know, do, have you received more information? I'm more excited than ever about a $1 Doge. And I think it's actually going to be, the uh, last day of summer, <laughs> because it's you could say it's been the summer of Doge in the sense that you know he changed the picture to Doge, right? The amount of attention that's been paid on Doge. If you asked most people which cryptocurrency has been one of the most talked about this summer, it would be Doge. I would. That's my opinion on that. For I mean, I could be wrong, um, and sometimes I am for sure. But I recognize that, and I. I, I, I adjust my um, my driving skills accordingly. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, I have different opinions. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's allowed here. Um, Tim's got one here. Just give me one second. Hey, Sam and Moo, the market seems to be consolidating over the one trillion market cap. This is great, but when will we see more cash come back in to like two trillion market cap, for example? Well, I think we're gonna our run to three trillion is gonna be pretty quick. You know, so um, I think the best thing to do is to set your um, your targets for jumping off. And, you know, I definitely would not my me personally, where I've been in since 2017. I would not be reinvesting a whole lot into cryptos. And it's really only because um, I do see I do see a. Uh, a lot of bedlam and upset in the financial industry, like coming down the road. And I'm like, okay, does that uh, cryptos, they keep saying they go like that, but then they go back up like that. Um, so what I would do is with my doge is I'm probably not going to take it all at a dollar or a dollar 20. Now I'll probably just take some and then I'll keep some in right. A large part of it. in Cause I do see a higher number and, um, but as far as reinvesting, so it's like the money I take out, I'm not looking to put back in. But what I'm more likely to do, because I'm seeing some really big, like our run to the 100 trillion, and I don't see us having to wait, like this 2030 stuff, I'm like, oh, I don't think it's delayed that long. I don't think I don't think Ethereum to 12,000, which has been my number for like, I think, well, when did it, it was 20, May of 2019. I think I said 12,000. So it's been my number for a while. Um, so I don't see to 2030. I see things being much quicker. So the idea there, if you don't want to cause a lot of stomach upset, is when you get to your, like, you could by next week, the like polka dot runs to like $25 on an announcement. And you're like, oh, man, I, I only paid like two bucks for that. I should probably, I'm 10 times, I should take my first tranche of that. And you do. And then it goes up some more and then you take some more. Well, I mean, if you've already taken out half of your polka dot, right? And then it goes like that before it does the big up again, then, I mean, you're feeling okay about that. So, I mean, that would be my approach with it between now and uh, like the end of 2024. It's just, there's so many things that are happening. I'm just like, I, 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 look at all the potholes. I mean, 
you know, you guys are lucky you, you got your seatbelts on right now, I'm telling you. And we're passing out the crash hand on helmets as, as, we're, as I speak. Hi, Sam. What are the three best cryptos to buy this month? Well, I mean, we've just talked a whole bunch about Ethereum. Um, let's see. And I would say, now, I don't know if anybody has um, any Avalanche or not. Because, you know, I do like to flip the script script a little bit. And I know I always say like, oh, Ethereum, Doge, and Matic. I mean, those are just no-brainers. But I'm like, okay, well, I can't buy any more Doge. Um, Ethereum, I'm just, you know, it's like I'm an, an Airbnb guest with Ethereum. Because <laughs> no, it's like a parking place, right? Oh, I'm, I'm in the city now. I guess I'm just going to put it in Ethereum while I wait and see, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would, if you want to throw like a new one on your list, uh, avalanche is there is there anything going on with the avalanche this week there is Just, they're actually they're doing quite a bit with gaming uh they're getting uh, quite a bit of traction so i i think it's just a it's an emerging chain so um and you know some of the other l1s are getting some notice now i think this is what people should maybe remind themselves of you know for years and years and years way over four years we never said it was going to be some horrendous crash it was going to be this thing from the top down and the bottom up and these these worlds are going to mesh and a lot of these legacy players have actually been here for a long time so you know um you saw microsoft partnership with aptos for example and aptos used to be uh the facebook uh, chain so when that split off, you had Aptos and you had Sui. And, um, but yeah, so I think, I think these are just maturing of markets and I actually like Avalanche. I don't have any right now, but I've had it in the past. Um, if I had to pick three, even though it's very boring, uh, they'd be what I usually say, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, something like that. And yeah, um, yeah. and if it wasn't Chainlink, it'd probably be Matic. So um, yeah, so those would be mine. There's a couple more questions inside this question. It says, where do you see the market cap for cryptos in the first six months of 2024? Wow. Wow. I, I, well, I feel like we'll be over 3 trillion for sure by then. Okay. And then the last six months of 2024. Uh, I feel like we would have achieved more highs like during 2024 during the year, like in the summertime, late summer, maybe even till 8 trillion. But then there's like a massive pullback, but it has nothing to do with, uh, it has nothing to do with blockchain technology. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm fielding a lot of things, which is why I like that we do meet on a regular basis because that you guys yeah. pull the blab out of me. So, uh, but guys, please try just to do one question. It's just, you know, we're out of fairness to other people. And I, I recognize they've been upvoted. So I don't want to be too hard on you. I, I absolutely appreciate this. That was a fantastic question. So I don't want to dog on that person at all. Like when you got great questions and they're upvoted, but just be mindful of that, that, you know, we would, might get to the point that we're going to have to leave off like maybe the last 10 questions if right. we start getting to a really high number. Thanks, Sam. Hello, Sam and Moo. The SEC has appealed the XRP court decision. How will this play out? Thank you once again. And Sam, I don't know if you got a chance to take a look at the, the court document, but basically the SEC is asking uh, the appellate court to take another look at this because they're saying the Torres decision is affecting their ongoing investigations. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, just what are your thoughts? Sam? Oh, I didn't feel like they would be successful on the appeal. I did have someone ask me that question before. And I said, even if they get the appeal, they won't win the case. So that's just yeah. falling back on my, okay, well, I've not been 100% on it. Usually I am. Usually I describe stuff pretty true to the way it happens. But if there is that twist we talked about, it could be the one I just mentioned where if if it comes out that the appeal is accepted and you're like, oh, that's not what Sam says. So maybe she's wrong about the other thing. The people on the other side are just letting me know, like, it's going to be no bueno for them. XRP is going to be fine. And um, as we move towards $1 and I... I left my Bitfi wallet where my XRP is up in Canada. So Thanks, Sam. Uh, just give me one sec here. Uh, I did see Deaton mention something about this, uh, or it might have been Hogan and Hogan. I can't remember. Um, but uh, if this goes through, what sucks about this for, I think, a lot of XRP holders, they might be in this low land again. 
which is which is tough. But there's a lots of things going on. There's there's exchanges relisting and things are moving forward. But it would it would really be tough on people, if, you know, because I think the first uh, potential court would have it'd be like May of 2024. So I just hate to see XRP people wait again, you know, but uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see yeah. how it all shakes out. And if anybody was a member of our, you know, Patreon channels way back years ago when we started them, um, one of the things that we talked about was that, you know, XRP was going to survive. Um, I did see a very quick move from $1 up to $10. Uh, that it would, you know, a, a good announcement would come up, it would be at $1, and then it would, you know, be at a much higher number, um, 10 or more. And because of the timelines on things, we recommend it to people that, you know, they stay involved with crypto and, you know, get on to the other cryptocurrencies that are doing well. And that's why my plan was always to spread my bets. And so if you are somebody who has FOMO'd back into XRP, Right. Like I haven't bought any since, gosh, when did I get it? I mean, long years time ago. ago. Yeah. Long time ago. I have not yeah. bought any more XRP. And actually that's on my BitFi wallet too. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I have things Doge and XRP. Oh, less than time for Samantha Jane. Right. But anyhow. Um, oh yeah. I, I feel like that's going to come soon, but I would recommend to you if you have, well, I don't recommend, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I would do if I was in your shoes, knowing what I know and, seeing what I see coming, I would be like, ah, you know what, if you bought in and you, if you bought like a ton of it at that low 17 cents, because I have a lot of people ask me, Sam, should I get a 17 cents? It's like, absolutely. Right. If people want to get rid of their XRP because they don't believe in it, well, you just take it, you know, you, you hold it then. And, you know, when it goes to a dollar, I mean, you're up more than five times on your money. And I feel like people put like a whole lot of money in. So because of the length of time of things, like how quick that hockey stick may, might take happen, it could be to 2024. And here's the deal. I mean, I'm talking about Avalanche. Um, I haven't sold any of my Solana, right? And um, I'm thinking of, you know, maybe releasing a couple. Of, we've had some people turn in some NFTs. So I was thinking about when I have some time, maybe releasing a couple of NFTs and getting a few more Solana in my stable there. But um, I'm feeling good about a lot of the other stuff besides XRP. So I strongly encourage folks, if you are sitting on millions of dollars in one cryptocurrency, I'm telling you right now, spend, spread your bets because, you know, it is, it is, it's, it's like gambling right now. It's, it doesn't make any sense to a lot of people why some cryptos are doing what they are doing. And then other ones are like that, but look at stellar lumens. I mean, that will just take off overnight and, um, you know, people have been holding a lot of it for years, but yep. it, it's been, you know, it, it's been like slowly propagating the planet with, with its blockchain and it's involved in so many different places. And I can see that. And I'm kind of like, how come you can't see it? Because now you can actually, if you wanted to track it, you could see it. But I'm very excited about a lot of other cryptos besides XRP. So again, don't panic if you um, don't have any XRP. Don't foam in and buy any. There's going to be lots of other stuff that's going to be going to a lot more than, well, what is it now? What is it now? Like 70 cents or 60 cents? So, you know, that's I don't even know. 15 times your money. XRP, yep, 63 cents. Uh, XLM, 13, almost 14 cents. Hey, Sam, do you get any information from the other side on Star Atlas possibly being associated in some way with the gaming comp company Activision? Thank you. Do I get that? Now, I don't know if it's Activision, but I did see a gaming company. I saw that there would be an announcement for Star Atlas and that that it would be a game changer. So it was just one of those, hold on to your Star Atlas. It wasn't a mistake. You were just a little bit early. And that's okay. I, I mean, my the money that I put into Star Atlas was crypto money. It wasn't house money. Uh, this next one's uh, pretty involved, pretty long uh, situation here from Brian. It looks like Brian was hacked. That sucks. Sorry about that, Brian. Um, where did we start? Hey, Sam and Moo, I was hacked by an individual through my email, and they stole all my crypto out of my Kraken account. It was a lot. I hope I can get it back to the point. It doesn't look like it, though. I still um, am trying to get access to my crypto.com app. I've been dealing with poor customer service for the past five days. The scammer tried to get into my hot wallet, but they don't have the seed phrase. I need help. 
Crypto.com are holding my funds and have put me through hell. I would advise in this group to stay far away from this exchange. I need to figure out how to get my funds released back to me. Any help would be greatly appreciated. That's tough, buddy. Um, a lot of us don't keep stuff up on exchanges for this reason. Um, and I've never really had a good experience with crypto.com. Kraken's a great exchange, but like I said, I'd never keep crypto up on an exchange. If I want to sell something, then I'll move it there. But I know that doesn't help you now. Um, I would just go through the proper channels. Uh, and when you say a lot, if if it is truly a lot, if I had done that and I had lost a lot on an exchange, I'd probably go get a lawyer. Um, so um, to help me through the process. But what what is a lot to one person might not be a lot to another person. I would just keep trying to go through the channels and see what you can do. Um, but yeah, sorry. I don't really have anything for you. Sam, do you have anything for Brian? That's a tough one, Brian. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, it is. It is for Brian. Um, well, I'm going to say they were showing me a lot of like dollar cost averaging. I don't know what he had on the exchanges. I saw a lot of eights, like 80,000, maybe 8,000, 18,000, something like that. Um, I don't know. So, um, but I appreciate Brian. Like normally you don't ask personal questions during the crypto review, but this one is uh, very timely. And actually we had to edit out some stuff earlier. So hopefully this goes in the first 30 minutes of freebie we put on YouTube because, again, I just want to use uh, this opportunity, uh, you know, to tell people that it's so important that you do not leave your cryptocurrencies on exchanges. Use them like you use a public washroom, get in and get out. And again, I'll give the folks from Bankless credit for that saying that is not what I made up, but it is so true. Think about it that way. Um, Brian, I do have some information because I think that that's what Brian is coming to me for. I mean, for someone like me, he could help you secure your stuff. Like, so you do this stuff sort of ahead of time. Yeah. Um, I know, I don't know if Moo has much time or not, but he does have a consulting business. Um, if he doesn't have time, he could probably direct you to somebody who does have time that he trusts and knows, knows does a good job to help people secure their cryptocurrencies. Um, it's money well spent. Um, I did the research myself in the beginning, back in 2017. I like to know about everything. I was dealing with like a lot of money, part of my retirement funds, because I am retired yep. for five years now. Um, so I did not, if that happened to me, Brian, I would have to go back to work, right? I would go have to, I would have to, like, I don't do this because I have to, I do it because I want to. So I am paid for it. It is my business, but you know, it's something I do because I absolutely enjoy it and feel like I'm making a difference in the world. And I appreciate so much redirecting some folks to Moo Ant who today are going, how do I make sure I don't, that doesn't happen to me. And I know the psychic nerds that they talk a lot about the different ways to secure things. And they also stay up on the scams the same as we do here. Um, but I am going to say that uh, what they're showing me, Brian, is that um, the dollar cost averaging that you're going to do in that you're going to be putting some money into new cryptos that you would not have otherwise. And those are actually going to have a higher multiple. Um, I will, uh, I'm going to tell you that they showed me that you may get your head into like a sort of a desperate trading mindset, right? And that will eventually burn you. I don't do it. I mean, and I have abilities to read minds and see the future. And even I can't do that because it's too convoluted for me. It's like trying to go around the ethos in rubber gloves. I mean, I can't, I'm not, I can't call it that close, just the story. So that's the advice I'm gonna give you there from myself, from what I see, because I think when Brian's asking that, he's asking from the point of view of, you know, it's not looking good for getting it back, Sam, but what say you? Like, do you have anything you can tell me that's gonna make me feel a little bit better about my situation? And it's sort of like, well, you know, I, I've been married twice and the first time it was a hell ride, but, you know, if I hadn't gone through that, then I wouldn't have been available when I was 40 to get married to my second husband. Right. So, you know, and he's great. He, we get along great and he's been willing to, um, you know, put up with me while I do this. I mean, it's a big deal, right. To have somebody go from being an executive to like this medium who does his hobby channel for cryptos. And he watches me take all of my cash and just go boom into, into cryptos. Right. And he, and he, you know what? And he didn't say anything against me that he was like totally trusting me like as a person but that was the example i want to use to you brian is that i know it's really terrible right now but this is going to spur you on to number one 
don't leave your stuff on exchanges. So later on, like, let's say you go and you start dollar cast averaging into something like Avalanche and you buy some more Matic. Maybe you didn't have a whole lot of it before or, you you know, or it goes down and you're just like, oh, I'm going to put a whole bunch into Matic because you have in your mindset, I need to catch up, but don't trade, right? That a lot of people get into that, the trading part. So you have to say, you say in a little bit longer, but there are um, some nice results for you in the end. Just kind of think about the things that I talked about, Brian. And for those people who are listening today, who you've been hacked, we've had a lot of people in our group who've been hacked um, or who lost their seed words or, you know, had numerous, numerous things happen that we've really, you know, we've really uh, held on to one another and helped them get through because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Good advice. Good insight. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. Sorry, Brian. That's tough. Uh, when I've had people uh, contact me, and I and I do from time to time, uh, with things like this, I, I make sure they fill out a, um, a cyber theft uh, report through the FBI. Um, and it, like I said, it all depends on how much money it is. Um, but you know, there might be some sort of remediation. I don't know if there's going to be, but uh, I wish you the best. Stay strong. And you know, sometimes when these things happen, you just just get back up. Just dust yourself off and get back up and, you know, you'll be all right.